And out here, I think there's a possibility here you that, well, first of all, IG are going to be doing a five-man invasion into the jungle. It makes sense because we've got some, especially the Shadow Shaman, uh, some supports that really need to be able to pick up their level six quickly. Knowing that Titan are going to be trying to go for this push strat, it would help if they have more pushing power than just the Death Prophet ultimate early on. You know, they, they don't want to have to, like, use the exorcism in a team fight and not be in a position to push that tower. If they have the Shadow Shaman wards also available to them, you know, they have that backup option in order to take those towers. Yeah, they do. And we look over to IG now, we see actually a smoke coming out here. The Treants will scout out first this uh, Rasta right about there. They have very bad vision, by the way, not as good as a hero. <laughs> and they try to chase after him to find him, but net seems like he's going to be just fine. Very safe movement from bad. Titan here with the rest of them. And is he going to be fine though, Net? Oh, Ooh. that was so oh, close. Man. He is, I think, yeah, so lucky to be there. alive here. Titan. Yeah, they're, they're barely dodging this first blood. IG still though, no matter what, um, that smoke is still really useful because they lay down some wards that are guaranteed to block at least one, maybe even two minutes of camps uh, just because of the fact they threw down those wards completely undetected. So yes. uh, Titans don't know where the wards are going to be. They are blocking up both of the hard camps to start with, and they also get themselves a very good aggressive ward in the beginning to see those kind of rotations. So And this to mess with Ohai. Like, that's, that's the goal to mess with Ohio. It's, if you don't do this, then Batrider can very easily just run into jungle and kick back, farm up a whole lot. Mm -hmm. But now with these wards dropping down here, it's going to be really annoying. Nice little pull here from uh, Furion. I feel like I haven't seen Furion for such a long time that it's really rare to see just a creep pull that he used to do every single game. And um, his one tree is actually going to be okay with 28 HP. I thought he dropped one of the melee teams that he's gonna run back as well. The YYF got a good start here. Whenever you do this, you can sort of hold the lane and get tons more experience than you would if you don't. Yeah, this is uh, really a perfect start. And, and you're right, it's been a while since we've seen that kind of uh, pulling action from a Furion. And not entirely sure why that has stopped so much because it is a perfect maneuver. Earlier we saw Ohio had to use his uh, Firefly in order to get away from the three man of IG in the top lane. And we also have middle. KYXY is going to be playing the Death Prophet up against Ferrari's Faces Void. Yeah, I, I feel a little bit better about off lane Void than mid lane against the Death Prophet. Mm -hmm. This is not an easy lane by any means. Uh, even if you have some ganks from SD, but right now SD is being pulled away by Batrider on the top lane, so no ganks and Death Prophet knows it. She can pressure the advantage on mid lane. Would you have rather wanted to see um, Razor and Faces Void switch, switch positions, no. where the Razor is going up against DP and then you have a one position Void? Mm, I would actually rather see the off lane Void and the mid Furion, to be honest. Okay. Anything other than this. Razor, right. Razor mid is fine if the person on mid wants to play it, like RTZ plays it all the time for EG. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Razor or Furion, I just don't like this mid void to be honest. It's a little bit of a sad lane and giving a DP so much for free. It's gonna be uh, very costly. Dyer's middle tower is under Ohio, attack. he's going up against a really dangerous uh, combination here. The Shadow Demon into the Kunkka is a classic setup, and then the Razor as well adds in a lot of early damage. Um, Ohio does still have, though, that Radiant uh, offlane advantage, which is you have access to this camp right here, but you can see how well IG are doing defending it. They even have the Shadow Demon positioning himself in the river just to make sure that Batrider is not sitting there soaking up any of the experience. So yeah. all in all, I think they're doing a fantastic job countering this Batrider. That's true. And meanwhile, Net is running around in his own jungle and wondering, where are all my creeps? Uh, so he's going to have to D-Ward, and they already scouted out which camps are blocked. He's not going to D-Ward, by the way, these sentries, because they will take uh, time out. But uh, that just means no stacks for Batrider to fall back on, and if he doesn't have a good time here on top lane, there's not going to be any saving grace for him. He has to farm his Blink Dagger slowly. And that's a nice move by IG. This little move on level 1 makes the Blink on Batrider come so much later. So and on top of that, YYF is actually doing a great job in his off lane. He's about to pick up level three. So all the pulling that he's doing, he's going up against a pretty dangerous lane as well. And that's why he's doing the very safe route of trying to just constantly go for these pulls. Now, <laughs> Net is doing uh, well what he can to stop this. But yeah, he's going to pull it here. So yeah. it's actually going to stop. Mm -hmm. So the shackle definitely worth using there. And he's going to get a pull through as well with this. 
So nice job by the Titan supports to deal with this pool. And YOF is probably a little bit upset right now, not getting more than that. He wants to get these creeps again, setting out more greens. I, I want to go back to this mid lane. Um, yeah. I actually have a little bit more faith in this. I was there was a match when Faces Void was first coming back into the meta. Um, he was picked up as mid in a Chinese game, and he was going up against one of the strongest laners in the game, up against other melee heroes, and that was the Viper. Yeah. And when Faces Void ended up actually coming even, coming away from that matchup even. Uh, for me, all bets are off when, when it comes to Faces Void mid. Something about him being mid and just having the backtrack, I don't know if it's just luck or what have you, but it, it seems like the Faces Void actually does really well surviving through any kind of harassment. So, and, and when it comes down to CS, he's doing not bad. 18 and 3 compared to the 27 and 2. It's one of those matchups you know the enemy's going to pull out more, but there's, you know, as long as you're getting something for your mid hero, I think it's okay. Yeah, it's it's working out quite well, and Ferrari is doing a really good job as well last team here. So as long as he doesn't get bullied out of the lane completely, he's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And with the big base damage of Void, you can farm on the tower decently. So the fact that DP is pushing him all the time doesn't really affect him that much. It was working out better than I at first expected. Um, Wraith, Wraith King, as his carry now, has the Hand of Midas flying out. Going to be farming up a whole lot. I still favor IG a whole lot though, going into late game, if Titan don't transition to a very nice push. And with the amount of harass- or not harassment, just the, uh, the distraction coming out from uh, Furion here on bottom lane, it's very hard to get level 6 early on, uh, on Rasta. Yeah, look at that. Another pull is going to fail because of the Furion constant uh, distraction. While the two supports are suffering from Titan for that exact reason, that they can't actually get pulls, the two supports from IG have been spending a lot of time in this mid lane attempting to gain the death, uh, ganking the Death Prophet here. And uh, with Ferrari picking up his Chronosphere, it's not a big surprise. They want to make this rotation, but if they never actually successfully get the kill onto this mid KYXY, then they're just wasting a ton of time. Yeah, that's that's true. And something you have to do though, go and try to stop the DP because she can't just be left to her own device. She is going to push you down really hard, especially mm -hmm. when you have a Void uh, mid who can't be push himself. Uh, DD Room going to be found now. Shadow King could take it if he wants to, but he's going to gonna leave it for someone. I think he should just take it. Yeah, it looks like Chuan is going to oh. grab it for whatever uh, reason. I have no idea why you would want it on Kunkka more than ST. ST yeah, he doesn't so even have type right clicks. Yeah, ST gets so many more right clicks in in any given scenario. He mm. even has boots on ST. I think that's a weird choice, but doesn't really matter too much. Looking over to the off lane is no oh, actually mid. They go with the. Yeah. I looked away from mid just because I was like, ah, there's no way they're gonna actually get this gank. And sure uh, enough, try, when Ferrari initiates. Kite it goes fight. poorly, and with the ghost, Ladies they actually right kill Ferrari. Oh my goodness, he couldn't get enough backtracks, and they actually get first blood for KYXY. The attempt at a gank from IG is spoiled drastically as Titan actually get the kill, and they're now gonna be able to use this momentum to push down this tier one tower really early on. A cliff will help, but I think uh, Titan are already, already in a position to claim the tower. Yeah, they might be. They're trying to, and there's not too much to stop them, but then again, they don't have anything more than this. The mm. summons are going to be gone, or the spirits are going to be gone, and no wards, no summons, no nothing. So, just going to back down to their, to their lane. So, they finally got the first shot on uh, Void, which is really big. That time is still Radiant's top lane, a little bit of push is applied. Attack. Mech almost done <clears throat> on Razor as well. Yeah, this top push makes a lot of sense. Seeing some of the heroes in the mid lane, uh, sure, your gank attempt failed, but let's make the most out of a bad situation, which is they saw Batrider bottom, now's the time to push in this top lane. Batrider can't even get close because he, if the Shattered Demon gets close enough to land the disruption, Batrider's probably dead because it should be an immediate torrent after that, and that should be enough slow for uh, Luo just to right-click him down. So That's why he's just playing so careful. KYXY finding a nice regen rune there as he Run some pretext top rune. So that's really lucky break for him. Meanwhile, mid, Ferrari is solo HP again, just by a few carry uh, crypt swarms. And this is the downside to Void mid. Like, he doesn't have any real sustainability. Yes, you have the backtrack chance, but you can't really rely on that completely. It's not gonna heal you up again when you do take damage. And, uh, hmm, I 
don't really agree with KYXY's decision on uh, skill build. I prefer to just have three points in Crypt Swarm and maxing out the, the Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Because you only get five uh, or 50 damage for the last point in Crypt Swarm and it increases mana cost by 25. Whereas if you take that point, put it into Witchcraft instead, you get 5% movement speed, 5 less mana cost, and uh, 1 second less cooldown, as well as your exorcism getting one more spirit. So it, it's just a difference of paying 35, uh, or sorry, 30 mana to get 50 more um, damage on Crypt Swarm. It's very cost ineffective. But you don't have a problem with the early level one silence, right? No, no. Okay. Silence is silence is perfect. You need to have that available. Yeah, it's so strong versus the faceless void. If you actually manage to catch him out, well, first of all, if you you find some sort of initiating stun and have the fall of silence, faceless void is dead 100. percent But at yeah. the same time, you get off the silence when oh, Ferrari tries started. to initiate. The smoke is revealed here by uh, the ward. It saw them, so X. Oh, wow, you a little bit brave there, though. Yeah, they do have heroes coming in from behind. Yamate is going to come in with his Wraith King, uh -huh. but they decide against it. Uh, uh, that should have been a setup by Dyer's Titan, but tower. they just kind of got overwhelmed there. The Skyrath Mage was hoping to get a counter tank from the Wraith King, but it goes directly against them, and IG will now claim another Tier 1 tower. That was, that was very sloppy by Titan. Dyer's they knew exactly what was going to happen, and they predicted it perfectly as well, but just reacted poorly, stood in a very stupid position with uh, Skyrath standing out in the open. Uh, if you want to reveal the smoke, you need to have vision and stand in the trees or something. Um, they could just attack off. Uh, Yamate trying to commit to this tier 1 tower, but it's going to cost him his reincarnation if he does. And uh, that means he's going to back up, and that should be a deny. Sure enough, Luo, the ward set it up perfectly for him <laughs> and uh, gets the last hit on that tower. So, one tower down in the favor of Titan, two down for IG, and the one tower that Titan have claimed so far was denied, so that should mean a rather large gold lead for IG. 750 looks like it's dipped down from about a thousand gold lead at one point in time for Titan, uh, primarily probably because of that first blood. Titan's still getting more experience out of the map right now, almost a 2500 experience lead, and that has probably got to be primarily because IG supports Dyer's rotating around so much. The rather solos have been doing fine, especially the Furion, who's pulled a lot out of this off lane. It just comes down to those two Solo spending so much time trying to gank the mid lane. Yeah, that's true. Furin doing a lot of work as well, and IG supports, as you say, roaming a lot, and even uh, Lua and Razor roaming as well. So, quite a lot of movement, but now going for this Roshan, I feel Loki should try and move down there as well, but getting solo experience is fine too. They will get this Roshan without any contesting, really. And this is this is a really big deal because, as I said, this is a push strat from Titan with the Rasta crop. It's pretty obvious. And uh, IG, if they can get Roshan and get some nice advantage here in the early game, they're looking really, really fine. Yeah, their early aggression has actually surprised me, the way they've been able to take towers. But it does make sense. Against a push strat like this, um, Titan, despite the fact that from is strong, hold on to that fight. He's going to be able to grab Tron, pull back into Domite. He gets the stun. What a beautiful Chronosphere. Set up. Lua's actually stealing a lot of damage from Net. They're going to be able to get at least two kills off this as Net falls. Disruption goes down. Lua is in a great position to continue laying down damage. Yamate does have a reincarnation. He needs to focus Luo, who's already so low, but they know he has an agency, and that's why KYXY is gonna even gonna bypass him. They continue to go for YYF. Last stun will be able to ensure it. Now Razor's gonna come back and he's behind enemy lines here. <laughs> but there is no stun gonna be coming out. As, uh, it's just gonna uh, walk away. Yeah. The good old walk away. If only Yamate had like a really early blink dagger, they could potentially get a, get him killed. But uh, yeah. that fight was not bad for, for um, Titan in any way. I thought they, it was a disaster with that Chronosphere setup with the damage already being leached away by Luo. Um, that's sort of a dream scenario most of the time. But Yeah, it it's... worked out really well actually, getting both the Aegis and two kills. Mm -hmm. So not bad at all. And actually the Wraith King getting uh, both of those kills, so a lot of gold towards him. But imagine if the Kunkia was not dead there when that Chronosphere lands. Yo, that yeah. would have been so huge. The damage, of course, from uh, Kunkia's ship now as he is hitting level 6 right now is 400 on level 1. It's like an AoE finger of death with a stun. Yeah, and the damage reduction Amazing. as well is one of my favorite things about it. The boat coming in is the support Kunkka, uh, giving your allies a 50% damage reduction is huge. And I, if I'm not wrong, that got buffed up like 10% or something. Yeah, 
Well, they buffed the duration as well on the, oh, right, the ROM by uh, two seconds from eight to ten. And that doesn't sound like a big buff, but it makes a huge difference having the movement speed for even longer and uh, damage reduction. So uh, Ghost Ship is a really strong spell. And this yeah. is why he can be strong even as a support. Just throwing out the spell to aim nicely. It looks funny though to see a Kunkat now that have Tidebringer at level 6. I love this move in from IG. They are trying to pick off uh, Yamate really early on. Knowing that he has Reincarnation and doesn't have level 2 of it, um, if they could get a kill, overwhelm him in this bottom lane, and then kill him a second time, that would not only be a kill on the carry of Titan, but also that critical ultimate that even when he comes back, it's going to be on cooldown for quite a long time. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, though, the Yamate dodge. just picked up his Blink Dagger and is going to move with the rest of his team to move around the map. Yeah, and it seems that they are heading towards top lane, a little bit of a journey up there, and IG, meanwhile, on bottom lane, not too sure if they're going to be contested or not. Now they see some movement to top lane with DP, and they're just going to commit to pushing this tier 1 down as Radiant's fast as possible. Tower is under attack. I yes. wonder if IG could possibly defend as well after taking this tower. Uh, on the flip side, though, Titan might be able to claim two tier ones as Ned is in a great position to lay yeah. down these wards, get Dire the middle tower, and if he goes straight to the top lane, Radiant I don't actually see IG contesting Radiant's all of Titan like that with the Death Prophet attack. ultimate up, so I think that's actually going to be a two for one Yeah, trade. with the DD on Yamate as well, I think it's too much, so uh, it's going to be a nice trade here for Titan. At least IG moving into mid and farming up these wards whenever you can. Farming them gives you so much experience and gold. A lot of people only think about the gold, but in early game, this is tons of experience. Mm -hmm. Dyer's um, so top, top the pressure is actually attack. keeps going here. A lot of damage. If they don't come and defend this, is really bad by IG. Yeah, early on, IG have the kind of pushing power that can, Dyer's you know, take you by surprise with the Furion teleporting in, ensuring a couple tier one towers. But now, Titan, 15 to 25 minutes. This is where their pushing power truly comes online. We have the ultimate from the Shadow Shaman and oh, the yeah. Death Prophet uh, ultimate kind of hitting a, a big power spike at this point where he's got maxed out witchcraft as well as level two exorcism it makes a huge difference just one or two levels on the death prophet yeah. from from nine or ten into eleven um it just completely changes the ultimate and the power it adds to not only pushing but team fights as well and i think that's why ig are staying away from them for now um, they do have some really early team fight uh with luo actually being targeted at the top lane getting brought back into the skyrun major ultimate there goes that net that helps out quite a bit but he's still gonna fall the trade is going to be for Net's life as YYF teleported in in order to claim that kill, but still a worthy trade for Titan getting yeah, very the carry nice. of IG. Very nice still for Titan, just trading away the Rasta is not a big problem. So nice movement there, nice staying there so long. And Rasta, sure he did die, but he still has 1800 gold from taking these early towers. So he will have his Blink Dagger in not too long, which is the pretty much standard item you mm -hmm. want to start up with and then go into Aghanims or something. So they can actually initiate after that and maybe go on Void or something like that, making the fights a lot easier. Titan, I think you're doing a really good job taking back control of this game. IG had a slight advantage with the really early mech um, off of those two tier one towers, but Titan have uh, just been patient, farmed up, made sure they haven't been ganked too often and are now, I think, in better control of this game with the last couple levels. I think they win 5v5 engagements, and that is something that, despite the early mech, most of IG is not ready for fights at this point. Like, Chron if you get the ultimate, like, Chronosphere into bow combination and everything else, oh, yeah. like, it's it's a one cycle, just like, boom, 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 get a couple of kills, and then you just run over the enemy. But if they don't actually manage to get that perfect setup, the, the rest of their team has very poor sustained damage. The Shatter Demon is not going to be doing too much at this point. Kunkka has to land the Boat Torrent in order to do anything, and if he doesn't hit that, he's kind of useless. And Faces Void, as well as Furion, they're mainly physical damage at this point, which physical damage is not the greatest at 15 minutes in. You know, it's it's mainly magic damage that reigns supreme at this point. So really, it's just the Razor is going to be their best mid-game hero in order to contest Titan, while Titan, every single one of their heroes is at a, a certain peak of their own. Yeah, they do have some nice damage from IG, though, with the Medallion Shadow Demon. So if they get a nice Chronosphere and the Soul Catcher with Medallion, you're gonna see an insane amount of damage from just normal right clicks from uh, Faceless Void or from anyone really. Mm -hmm. uh, so look for that focus in the team fight and how they execute it. They could be really effective. And meanwhile, Titan, I think Titan are getting in a more comfortable spot as well. As they have all ultis ready now, they kind of want to just go top and push. Of course, smoking and trying to find Furin is gonna be a nice move. 
but uh, it might be a little bit. They may too just late. find him. Ohio, if he fireflies and runs straight across, he will find YYF. And oh, uh, he must get him here, yeah. Yep, there it is. Finds him, and with the four staff pushing right into the rest of his team. Kids nuke down immediately, and they can now claim the tier two. There's going to be a split push as IG are going to try and get a trade here at the bottom lane, but it's pretty obvious there's no way they can take this tower down as quickly as Titan can. So it's up to Titan. They can take this tower and then make a decision. Do they push the tier three? Them. Yeah, Titan will force them tier three, uh, tier three for sure. I think there's no reason for them to back and look at this. This push is really strong. I don't know how they're gonna stop them straight off here. I don't think they can. With the words already set up. KYXY, he's got his level 2 ultimate. He is already set up with a mech as well as a Yule Scepter. If he gets off the Yules at the right time, this is hard to defend. Yeah, it's very hard. Look at this. Tier 3, good tower gonna go down. At the best, I think IG can force Titan back after that tower goes down. But uh, just because the, the ultimate is gonna go down soon for the Death Prophet, so... Yeah, now they should just back. They used already Rasta Wards and DP ulti. No reason to stay around here. Got even a little bit of damage to the range tracks as well. And Titan, from being such a static game, they just open up, take Tier 2, Tier 3, and now they can really just force IG to take a fight because if IG don't fight them now they will lose the base in the next time this happens yeah they're, they're on the precipice of being able to maim IG by claiming a, a rack so early on in the game and it, it hurts you not only because of that pushing power but also the fact that you're probably getting last hits uh, less last hits from that lane because the creeps are, so are, are tar words. harder to tank and the goals you, that you do the gold is less so IG they, they need to find some pickups here and oh the blink away Ferrari went to try and get a time walk into a chronosphere but it did not work out for him great awareness there from the bat rider and that is all because of this ward right here that revealed the rotation from faces void the blink at the perfect time from the bat ohio too fast too sexy just running away and look at the amount of sentry wards going down in the dire jungle and still there are two observe wards this, this one is gonna be the warden no not even yeah the, the uh, vision they changed the vision, no longer allowing them to get that one. And Faith is actually going to be blown up uh, in his own jungle. As many counter wards as they threw, unfortunately, they didn't get the key wards that are here. And uh, that means that Titans see the opening in order to take down some of the heroes of IG that are farming in their jungle. Yeah. And let's go. Still Void Chronosphere is down. This is the big thing. They Ooh, know wow. exactly when it was used on top lane. They have a good feel for that. It can't be up yet. And they have all the ultis they need to go push top. Sure, no Batrider Lasso. Doesn't matter. We're not initiating. I'm so used to Faces Void having an ultimate for every single fight because yeah. it seems like uh, Faces Void games always go into late game where he's level 16 and maybe even have his an axe, Agonyms. but yeah. this is a big factor in oh, net. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, jumping board. It's the wards, and here comes KYXY. And this should be at least a range racks here. There's no way IG can lay down enough damage because KYXY silence up. There goes that Yule. He even has a mech to follow it up. Torrent, boat, and a good force staff is going to be able to save KYXY. And what was a lot of direct damage thrown his way. But KYXY getting out. No! Ferrari jumps forward, gets the last hit. Now he's going to be turned around on his Damascus Madness. Might do him danger, but Faith with a beautiful disruption saves Ferrari, who can continue to go for more. He's now got another Chronosphere. Locks in just Ohio. It's going to force him down. And Net and Extinct, I think they got to get out of here. They're going to try and turn around and help out Yamate, but he already lost his reincarnation for the first time and now goes down a second time. Three heroes die as Titan couldn't even claim a range rack there. I thought they had it in the bag there, but IG, beautiful, beautiful defense. Yeah, such beautiful. Beautiful coordination by IG and how they take the fight. And I have to say, support from Jack, it doesn't matter if you support or not. The amount of impact he has in a fight is so amazing with his ghost chip, making everyone so durable, so tanky, and fast as well. They can just chase down the enemy. Racer, for example, a hero who's already very, very, very fast. Mm -hmm. When he pumps his face boot with the Conqueror on as well, he's just storming after the enemy team. And yeah, Titan, they just had to try and scramble for whoever they could save. You know, the I love the point that you brought up really early on when I was talking about the power of Titan at this point. This medallion makes such a big difference. Oh, yeah. I think it was such a good pickup because not only does it allow you to get a whole bunch, whole bunch more damage out of this Faceless Void, who isn't hitting so hard just yet, or at least that point in time he wasn't. Um, it gets a lot more damage for him, but also allows them to take Roshan very quickly, which is exactly what we saw. IG winning a fight like that, immediately go into the Rosh pit, discover that it is up, and now claim another Aegis. So IG, uh, they know that they're kind of, they, they've been on the edge 
for the last like five minutes uh they could lose this game very quickly in just one bad team fight but I think they've done a great job doing everything they can to delay Titan and push this game out. The early Roshan that they get, they got uh, gave them an Aegis advantage, securing themselves like, okay, they're probably not going to force a 5v5. And then on top of that, letting some of the towers go. It's going for farm rather than, for example, they, they gave away that tier 3, right? At yeah. the top lane, they gave away the tier 3 without trying to force the fight because they knew, okay, they're going to take the tower, but as long as we don't let them take the racks, we're okay. We can let this game go a couple minutes later. Oh, bottom YYF being caught out here by Neft, some solo kill attempts. Beautiful. Beautiful. Much the same as we saw by Zai when we were casting the EG game as well. And of mm -hmm. course, Yamate is going to say, hey, look, a nice easy kill. I can just hit it <laughs> once and get the cred for it. Um, but really, Zai or Zai net just finding this one. And that's quite needed because IG, um, you know, as much as we were talking yeah. about. Ferrari not having damage. He's got now Yasha as well as a Mask of Mana. So he's hitting really hard. They've got the Aegis. IG can force a 5v5, and that's that pickoff is exactly what Titan needed. Yeah, they were just about to force down on mid lane. If they could catch anyone, they had aggressive ward just to give it a little bit of extra vision. So they could jump anyone really. But as soon as Furion dies, that stops the entire push, and no one on Titan will fall either. So, uh, some extra time to farm up for Wraith King. Meanwhile, we have a Manta style on Void. Oh, the Manta style illusions can move in your ulti. And you can disjoint some things, but there's really only the silence and, you know, you can juke the stun from Hit King. There's not much more than that. You can I take, take away both the silences. I'll give credit for that. So, yeah. good against both the Skywrath and the DP. So, uh, it's just a good item if you don't want to rush BKB, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I still think going BKB is not horrible in this game either. It would remove most of the damage, I guess. Yeah, I guess he, he really wanted to be able to have that early damage from the Yasha, and that will allow him at that point to just transition into the Manta, which is yeah. kind of the same as a BKB at this point. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's an interesting build. I, I think it's a very smart decision by um, Ferrari, very calculated one, that knowing that he needs the Yasha now, and that allow him to still be able to get rid of those nasty silences that can really cripple him. Yeah. I mean, if he, he tries to jump in, it gets instantly silenced by the Death Prophet or the Skywrath Mage. And that's a faceless boy who's just kind of like sitting there going, oh, oh no, there was supposed to be a Chronosphere here, but no, now there isn't. So that Manta will be able to stop the danger of that. IG though, I mean, what do you, what do, you do, uh, Waga? If you're in Titan's position, you can almost taste the win, but you're fighting up against an Aegis. Do you sit back and farm? How much time do you think Titan have until they have to push in again? I think Titan are on a timer for sure. I don't think they're waiting. I think they're trying to deal with the push that's coming on the side lanes every now and then here from IG, or I should say all the time. IG are very active in their movements and now even gonna smoke up. But as you see, Titan, they're trying to gather up already, go for push on fi uh, five man push on top again. They don't need to win a fight convincingly. They just need to have a fight by the enemy base with the wards going down and DP ulti and not die immediately. And they will get down in one set of racks. Downside is though, they can't afford to lose a fight convincingly. If they do that, then the game is pretty much uh, over. Nice, no, scouting not good. Ferrari, but the blink dagger on Yamate. Oh, begins up the. Just before Ferrari can get that one last hit. Now, Luo is going to start chasing down Yamate. They can even Chronosphere here in here. But the rest of the team is coming in. He does have a reincarnation. It's not that big of a loss. The upcoming fight is really what's going to determine it. That's why Ferrari's holding on to his Chronosphere. He's going to latch on to Yamate once again. Now, Ohio has actually been silenced up. He's not going to be able to get a pull. And there goes the carry on by the AYX fight. Fighting up against everybody. He doesn't have a yield anymore. Trying to keep himself alive with the mech, but being brought back by the X Marshall spot. And that delays the end of him. Yamate's going to come back for another fight. Skyrim Mage over there going up, but Luo is still alive. Finally, he goes down, but that just the Aegis. He's going to come back in a second. Yamate fighting up. And Ferrari the bat is too much, but now KYX fight. Yamate, they have to win this fight together. They both bought back. They need to get something out of this, but it doesn't look like they can pursue. IG are still the stronger team right now in this fight. Well, maybe with the Yules, they're going for it. Yamate, oh, he doesn't have a reincarnation. This could be a disaster. He gets the kill on the Furion. Our life deal is doing so much. They get the hex on the Luo. Yamate could stay alive here. There goes the oh Taurus. Oh my god, Yamate.
might even put it in the arm blades. He's done it. Yamate and KYXY with the help of Net coming in with the clutch disables at the right time. Stay alive and the buybacks in the end were worth it, Waga. Yeah, the buybacks were most definitely worth it. That was an amazing fight. Really, really nice play there by Yamate towards the end as well. Staying alive with toggles. And just the execution of this fight, there was so much going on. I can't possibly recap all of it. For example, to the side, there was Shadow Shaman bringing down the SD in a solo battle between the supports with the Rasta wards going down there. Rasta did not have a big impact because of this though, so I think that was worth it as well by Faith kind of bait out the Rasta to the side. And in the clash, it was just nice focus to bring down the Wraith King so fast, but danger fighting close to tier two towers, buybacks, mm -hmm. Are all or close to any towers, the buybacks are always uh, available. And that means Titan can spend the next couple of minutes uh, holding on to this game and farming up. They've got some big key items, and, and that's why I was asking you earlier how long do they wait? Because. Oh, it's the mana burn void. <laughs> He's coming over for a diffusal blade now. Oh, Sorry wow. for cutting you. I'm just no, that, finding that... this really funny. That's actually a big development. I think that's a really interesting play, though we talked about this earlier, right? It's not very often do you see a Wraith King go down, even against Mana Burn for Necronomicons or anything else. There's not very often times do you see a Wraith King die. But he, but he will for sure. If this mm -hmm. is a Diffusal level 2 with Manta Style and Void and he focuses Wraith King, that Mana Burn is really, really high. So uh, no way that Wraith King will stay on top of Mana. I mean, one hit from all those uh, on both the Illusions and the main mm -hmm. will be more than 100 mana burn. So yeah. every set of hits will burn more than 100 mana and uh, yeah, your mana is going to be gone very fast. So interesting build really from Ferrari and I like seeing this. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, this is one of the few times I like seeing this build. Oh my goodness, Juan takes down half of his health in just one chop from Yamate and they finish up the Shatter Team. There goes the gem. Juan trying to get away the teleport net. Oh, what? What actually stopped? He actually stopped it himself because Ferrari's coming in. He's gonna be able to clean up. Natch wants to die inside the chronosphere. Here comes KYX, YYYF. He's been blown up. Luo's trying to get away. Both of them, Ferrari and Luo, trying to get out, but they're being chased down. Ferrari makes the time walk out, but Ohio's on hot pursuit. Trying to slow him down with the uh, fancy sticky napalm. Even the flame break back, and I don't think Ferrari's making out of this one. Looking grim. He should be dying here, and that's all five dead from IG. And this should be straight down the mid lane. Lucky for IG at least, their lane is pushed out really far. So uh, they have that going for them, but that's the second time they lose a fight really convincingly to Titan. Mm -hmm. And the graphs tell the tale as well. When we look over to them, it looks pretty oh. drastic, to be honest. You got a feel for him here because Titan, they use the Death Prophet Ultimate as well as Shadow Radiance Shaman Ward, so they don't have this attack. amazing push. They yeah. can definitely take the Tier 2, I think, oh, yeah. but they can't go immediately uphill during this death time. And oh, so. The, the fallback would have been Roshan, but that actually is not going to be up for a couple minutes. It, it's still massive though, winning the second fight after already taking such a huge fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, the spike that I see on this experience graph is just one of the most steep spikes that I've ever seen. So, uh, it's it's really big. Oh, if they can take this tower and back off, they're gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. Might not even finish it completely here. Yeah, it's only because Yamate has spent so much time going, Roshan? Is there Roshan? <laughs> How about Roshan? Yeah. And it, it's, it's a long time think they could have just taken the tower of Yamate, as you said, would just join them there. But they're still fine. They're really yeah. farmed now on Yamate. He's really fat. And uh, same with KYXY. He has 12 Bloodstone charges. Mm -hmm. So even if you focus him down first, he has mech and he has what I call the super mech, the bloodstone. If you kill him first, it's gonna heal his entire team. Whatever damage he's gonna take on the bottom. Yeah, they're coming in. They're gonna go for Yamate first. He does have a reincarnation, and that's why Ferrari once again holding on to his chronosphere. There goes Ohio. He's actually gonna grab Ferrari. He's been silenced up, but remember that Nance is gonna come into play. Ferrari does get out the chronosphere, being able to lock down two and the boat on top. KYXY falls. Ohio to follow as well. Oh, the IG. Disruption. They're gonna catch Yamate as well. Oh, Yamate, he does have, uh, no, no reincarnation this nope. time. Already having used it, and uh, Ferrari barely able to get away with his life. And yeah, this the Kaka Rum keeps bringing him down to 1 HP, it looks really funny. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, this time as well, Roshan being checked, but nope, this is a late Roshan response, so <laughs> sorry IG, sorry Titan. 
No Roshan's for you. Still 60 seconds on Yamate. I think they will be able to sneak in Roshan. Uh, Titan just that one death timer alone. I yeah. think ensures IG will be able to get it. That Radiant's execution in team fight was really good attack. though. They got a nice Chronosphere and the ship was perfect from Chon as well. The extra damage coming in from it, but more more importantly, the survivability was so so good. It very aggressive pressure Radiant here, pretending that they have fortified. their team behind them. This is the old Havost play. It's like, nah, I have backup. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Well, well, the truth is, the, the <laughs> three heroes could have just overrun them because there was actually three from IG waiting in this Roche pit. And, yeah. uh, no, you see, I'm, uh, I'm baiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Anyway, that worked pretty fine, and they got the tower with it while they were farming Ancients as well with their team. So, really nice advantage gained there. And now Roshan gonna fall really fast to this damage medallion. There we go. Oh, yeah. Easy, now, yeah. Uh, oh, this is the third Roshan, so Aegis as well as Cheese. The Wonderful teams were so aching to get a Roshan in, and look at that. Uh, you were talking about how steep the uh, the incline was for Titan after a certain team <laughs> fight. Yep. Gold drop goes right oh back God. down in IG's favor. The hell, man. That's some. Uh, that's the. That's the shortest advantage I've ever seen, I think. <laughs> it's like, yes, we're three and a half K. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Three and a half K behind again. Yeah, TI4 has certainly been a uh, host of fastest a roller coaster, you know, man. Such as the fastest dieback that we were watching before <laughs> in, yeah. our, uh, in our games. Quite Rookie hilarious. Setting new records. Oh, that, was, that was sad for him on the Sky Wrath. But right now, Titan are a little bit hitting this point where you look at their lineup and just go, hmm. You should have been able to do more by now, unless, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, like, if you don't do more by now, you're gonna be very sad. Of course, Yamate is still happy. He's a carry hero. He's a wraith king, and he feels strong, but he still has to suffer the pain that is void with Manta style and Diffusal level two, punishing him. Um, but I think the next team fight, IG is so much stronger. It's 17 for 17 kills, but I would definitely favor them right now. This right. Titan are in a, in a pretty dire spot. So I, I got a question for you. Uh, Yamate here, his his mana issues that are going to be happening soon. Uh, because Faceless Void, not only does he have the level 2 Diffusal, he has the Manta that works inside the Chronosphere. He's soon going to have a Butterfly. In fact, he already has the extra attack speed from the, the Eagle Song by itself. So yeah. that Mana Burn is going to disappear. How does he deal with it? Do you actually get, like, a Soul Ring for your Wraith King this late into the game in order to try and get a clutch Soul Ring at the last second? Um, I because think, that reincarnation is so important? Or I think what the only do? thing you can do is what he just did, which is finish up your BKB so you can't get burned. Okay. And then try to fight with this, like... Uh, it's so hard to say. There's, there's no easy way out. Even if you're being punched by... Uh, by Void non-stop, as you say, it's an extremely clutch timing to use the Soul Ring. Wait a little bit as we see the aggressive movement here from IG. Can they possibly sniff out Titan's position? The IG can... they can feel the victory. They, they know they have an advantage right now with the Cheese and Aegis. Batrider, but he's very, very cautious. Titan, you can tell that they know exactly where IG are as well. This yeah, is a standoff. You have to give uh, IG credit, and I mean, remember when we were watching that Tier 3 fall and it felt like Titan were just kind of this inevitable <laughs> this so funny. Rax advantage. But IG, they, they made the more patient plays, and yeah. look at the position they're in now. They're one team fight away from victory, I think. Oh wow, Ferrari really wants to go. Yep, he's gonna go down, throw down the Chronosphere, let's see if he can burn down Yamate enough. Yep, sure enough, there goes all that mana, yeah. and no Yamate for the fight. He can buy back, I believe. No, no buyback just yet, Ohio's trying to jump away, and IG pretty much have already won the fight, but YYF is actually gonna be pulled back into the Tier 3, <laughs> and if only they had a buyback. Walking out again, like, okay, yep, take him. If only they had a buyback for the Wraith King, they, they could have bought back, maybe picked up YYF with that one play, but unfortunately... Radiance level 2, paying off, man. Yep. One play right there. Going in and taking out the Wraith King immediately. No buyback available as he already used that one a while ago and had no gold either. Anyway, yeah. Brax, gonna fall. And they're going for more. They want more while this uh, Wraith King is dead. They know he doesn't have buyback, else he would have used it by now. Just going. Yeah, and it's going to be up to Titan. I mean, Death Prophet, basically two carries are down, right? Death Prophet without an ultimate does nothing for you. Yeah. So Titan, 
they, they can't Radiant fight. Simply put, it's going to be two racks advantage going the way of IG, and Titan are going to have to find a way to crawl back uh, into victory. I think if this was any other tournament, Titan would be uh, probably calling the GG about right now, but it's TI4, man. They, they are going to push this to limits. They're going to try and go into the super late game and see if they can make a comeback there. But uh, IG, sure as hell, they've got like pretty much a 99% win chance here. I mean, the two racks advantage with a better late game uh, yeah, there's, no, team. there's no point sugarcoating this one. Like, right. IG have an insane advantage now with the Aegis still remaining on Void. They have Butterfly coming out right now, and they're just waiting for this, then they will jump in again. That's their goal, at least. I like the Observer Ward in your own base by Titan. It's like, oh, I need to see what's going on in my home. <laughs> yeah, I guess Might just need to make that sure. One because something is going to go in there and wreck some stuff. Ferrari, so ready to jump. Yeah, the Butterfly... I mean, I, I love how he doesn't even need a BKB because the the stuns that would be coming out, it, like the Shadow Shaman, is your best option to disrupt the Faces Void during that Chronosphere. That's really the only disable that's going to stop him at this point. True. I think the Kanka ship is really important too, though, in this game. Like, it's very hard to replicate what IG are doing here. You can't mm -hmm. really take this and just bring it to your standard type A game, like just okay this should work in every game no it's not really like that this is a this is a series of things like the conquer ship gives so much survivability in its own right so you don't really need bkb straight up on void mm -hmm. which allows him to stay alive for so long time with his manta and diffusal like it's a, a long story you know <laughs> sd as well yeah they're, they're to save him with disruption if needed so uh it's just nice play by ig though Really nice team play in the fights as well. And look at that, even more uh, survivability for everybody, really, with Luo grabbing that Shivas. That's going to be slowing down the attack speed of uh, primarily the Wraith King. And, uh, well, it seems like IG are just kind of unstoppable uh, at this point. They probably but just want this Rax that they left here with, like, 200 HP or not even that. But going behind top would be the better move. They could get a really nice grab here. And if this thing comes, daytime is on. Luo doesn't find... Radiance Just yet, it's and it's going to start focusing on the tier 2 now that they've been revealed. They're going to go for a straight 5-man push into the Radiance enemy base, and Titan, well, I think it's a 1 in million shot, but for 10 million dollars. One in a million is everything. So Titan will be fighting on, trying to just turtle their way to victory. You know, just sit back, farm. Uh, every single hero has a lot of growth. Like, even Yamate, as farmed as he's been um, in the past, he still has a couple slots that can fill out. He can get Boots of Travel, get another slot in, in exchange for those TP scrolls, even go for, uh, well, you can probably get rid of some of your items here. Maybe even get rid of the armlet in exchange for something like a heart. Um, you know, yeah, just... I mean, he can, they can all cap out a whole lot more, mm -hmm. but the downside though is that, sure, you, you try and farm up and cap out, but you still need to use IG's mistakes. Right. At this point, it doesn't matter if you play perfect as Titan, you still need a mistake from IG because perfect simple play will not win this game. And that's how tough this game is now. So uh, they need IG to mess up a whole lot, and I don't think they are. I looking very disciplined here. They have the cheese on uh, Void right now, and Roshan is not even too far off from respawning. So they might just play safe until he's up. That seems to be the plan. Moving together as four, not to get picked off. Yeah. And uh, since Titan have to defend lanes all the time, they know they're not getting ganked. So. Yeah, it seems like IG just winning for Roshan at this point in time, which should seal the deal. I mean, they've got, oh, they still have the cheese for Faces Void from that uh, previous Roshan, and oh, yeah. yet they're still going, okay, but there's still disadvantage we can have. And that's reason why IG are doing so well in the group stages that they're patient, and I think the best word would really be discipline for this team, is that they're, they're showing a lot of discipline in their play, uh, even going back again, giving up that tier three in exchange for just stretching out the game for a couple more minutes before having that final, that, that team fight that determines everything. I and think IG has always been the team that, if you think about a well-disciplined team that does not throw, mm -hmm. really, then IG is probably your your standard team when you think about this because I, I can't remember ever seeing them doing something uncharacteristic like diving into tier fours. It right. doesn't happen. Like they know this game should be a win. Let's not 
mess this up. Let's do it right and let's wait for Roshan. Now they see the movements coming out though. They know there's a little bit of sign of life here as bottom lane is being pushed out as well. And no one is defending Ooh, That's perfect. They can get Luo here. They can go for it. But oh, a clutch that's disruption. That's and the Chronosphere locking in two as well. Nan's going to come in from behind trying to pop bait. But in the meantime, the carries are having some serious issues. Yamate to get off his BKB. And that spoils Ferrari's defusal for the time being. But the Death Prophet is going to fall in just a moment. You'll say for the time being. But he's still going to fall. And that means the Wraith King. He goes down as well and gets away with his Blink Dagger real quickly. It's still a lost team fight. And that means he's probably going to go down a second time. The oh, that's Beautiful. <laughs> oh, that actually almost finished up a couple of those supports from yeah, IG. They, they looked a little bit low, but then again, that's gonna be it. Titan lose their fight. Nice attempt to go for something. As we said, they have to go on some form of stage to try and find, you know, IG not being ready for it. But we could see the SD there. Sure, the Razor looked like he was out of position, but SD was completely ready for something like this. So, um, yeah, IG, really strong performance and amazing play. Yep, both teams uh, going from uh, what is uh, five and two was what they were both at before this game. IG are now going to be going to six.